Fresh fears over the size of Dubai's debt have sent shockwaves through international markets, with major stocks and oil prices falling sharply as a result. Dubai World, the country's largest conglomerate, wants to suspend payment on its $60 billion debts until next May at the earliest. The state-owned flagship investor is behind projects as ambitious as buying up American ports and building Dubai's skyscrapers. The debts are so large, in fact, there is concern that non-payment could trigger another cycle of world financial turmoil like that following the collapse of Lehman Brothers last year. RT's financial pundit Max Kaiser says things are only set to get worse. This is the beginning of phase two of the global credit crisis. I notice that right now the Greek market is down 7 percent. So that's telegraphing huge distress in European markets. And don't forget that in Eastern Europe, the huge yet-to-be-revealed losses are going to create another huge wave of this crisis. I've got to hand it to Gordon Brown and Alistair Darling over at the U.K. They engineered the ownership of Royal Bank of Scotland to be transferred from the private sector to the people in Britain, who now own billions of dollars' worth of debt at Dubai ports. And this uh, news that we're just talking about now, a possible default or default on a loan is what it looks like it's shaping up to be. And uh, the people in the U.K. are now the proud owners of a defunct real estate deal in the Mideast. And uh, they should be used to that by now. All of their real estate in the U.K. is going belly up. So now they can add some Middle Eastern uh, distressed properties to their portfolio. So Gordon Brown and Alistair Darling have got to be the beavis and butthead of the global finance markets. They're truly uh, remarkable in their ability to pick losers. Well, on the surface, it only looks like another 60 or $80 billion is at risk. But at this point, after having gone through many hundreds of billions of dollars of write-offs, every additional 50 or 60 billion starts to cut into the bone of the global financial system. And these governments are at the end of their tether and their ability to keep shoveling more fiat currency onto the bonfire of their gross and inadequate inability to oversight the hedge fund and banking community. And so it's starting to really, uh, phase two of this crisis will start to really dig deep in a way that phase one, I'll, 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 as bad as it appeared, was really only superficial if we're going to look at this in the context of what's yet to come. What's yet to come is, is another huge uh, bankruptcy by a major UK bank. Uh, the obvious contenders are the names that we're reading about today, a big U.S. bank, and there are many more bank failures to come. The credit crisis is not even halfway through, You're getting through, uh, completely uh, eliminating all of the bad debts in the system. And again, these central bankers and politicians around the world have just let the bankers get away with wholesale thieving. I agree with uh, Putin's statement that Bernie Madoff got off light. Meanwhile, everybody else is... is uh, comparatively not getting any penalty whatsoever, and they're committing crimes on a much larger scale. Always a man to speak his mind. That's economist and RT contributor Max Kaiser. They're explaining as he sees it the threat to world finance from...